we worship this morning according to the communion service in its entirety, beginning on page 15 in the front of the hymnal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, you rule over all things in wisdom and kindness. Take away everything that may be harmful and give us whatever is good through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Old Testament lesson for today is from Isaiah chapter 35, beginning at verse 5. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then will the lame leap like a deer, and the tongue of the mute shout for joy. Water will gush forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. So far, the Old Testament lesson. Our psalm of the day, these words of Psalm 50, 
Sacrifice thank offerings to God. Fulfill your vows to the Most High. And call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you will honor me. So far the psalm of the day. And our epistle lesson is from Ephesians chapter 1 beginning at verse 15. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel is written in the 10th chapter according to St. Mark, beginning at the 46th verse. Now they came to Jericho. As he went out of Jericho with his disciples, the great multitude, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus! Son of David, have mercy on me. And many warned him to be quiet, but he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. Then they called the blind man, saying to him, Be of good cheer, rise, he is calling you. And throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. But Jesus answered and said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, Rabboni, that I may receive my sight. And Jesus said to him, Go your way. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. This is the gospel of the Lord. Let us join in confessing our faith according to the words of the Nicene Creed as printed on page 18 in the front of the hymnal. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Our text in our continuing study of St. Mark's Gospel from the 10th chapter. Now when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. It's a safe bet that the psalm verse for this morning rang a bell with many of you. It is this pledge from our God from Psalm 50 that was perhaps among the first Bible passages you and I learned. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you will honor me. Sometimes we see a favorite Bible passage like that played out in flesh and blood on the pages of God's book. Here we see on the road to Jericho blind Bartimaeus calling out to Jesus for help. We see how Christ delivers him. We see how he honors Christ. We say this ourselves, don't we? Each Sunday, in Trinitarian fashion, Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Here we see how we too call out to God for mercy. How Christ delivers us. And how we honor him. This is how it began. Now they came to Jericho. As he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great multitude, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. Bartimaeus does not sit here by accident. Christ does not pass through Jericho by accident. Jesus is on his way up to Jerusalem. His countenance is resolute. The lines in his face firmly drawn. He is, as the gospel say, say, going forth up to Jerusalem while his disciples follow him. The disciples and the multitudes too hang back in fear, in stunned amazement. As Jesus goes up to Jerusalem, they are unable to wrap their heads and their hearts around what Jesus has told them about what lies down the road. Suffering, death, and yes, resurrection on the third day. If you are a tourist in the land of Israel, chances are you might put Jericho on your itinerary. Notable archaeologists, historical dumpster divers have all had their chance at uncovering at least 25 layers of the city of ancient Jericho. There was John Garstang in the 1930s and Kathleen Kenyon in the 1950s and in more recent decades, a guy named Bryant. Jericho has a fascinating history. When the walls of Jericho came tumbling down at the sound of Israel's trumpets in the Old Testament, the soldier Joshua 
spoke a divine curse over anyone who would dare to rebuild the walls of that wicked Canaanite city. The Bible tells us how the curse came strangely to be fulfilled. In the days of wicked King Ahab, when a man named Hiel of Bethel rebuilt the walls and gates of Jericho at the cost of his two sons. Jericho was Little Eden, they used to call it, by the time Christ came along. A city of palm trees, roses, the scent of the balsam trees carried for miles on the breeze. Jericho was the winter residence and the playground of kings. The famous Roman Mark Antony once gave the city of Jericho to his beloved Cleopatra as a token of his affection. The city of Jericho was kind of a pocket-sized Chicago of its day, lying as it did on the trade route between Asia Minor and Africa. It was along the road to Jericho that Jesus pictured the good Samaritan binding up the wounds of the man who had been rolled in the ditch and beaten by robbers and left half dead. To the multitudes and crowds who follow Jesus through this famous city, as they go up to the Passover, does it even occur to them that the one leading the way is the one whom St. Paul would call Christ our Passover Lamb who is sacrificed for us. <clears throat> Jesus pays no attention to the sights and scenes and people and places that make most tourists snatch up souvenirs and snapshots. He cares for none of it because he is going to the cross. What is astounding is what does halt Jesus in his tracks. And makes him stop the whole parade. A blind beggar. On the roadside. Now you must understand that blind beggars and lame people and so forth on the roadside were a dime a dozen in those days. But here Jesus with literally the weight of the whole world upon his heart. Stops dead in his tracks for one blind beggar, Bartimaeus, who cries out, Son of David, have mercy on me. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. Then many warned him to be quiet, and he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Bartimaeus cannot see, but he can hear. He hears the commotion. He asks, what's going on? Someone tells him that Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. Bartimaeus begins to wildly cry out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. He cries from a heart of faith. He cries from a heart that's been waiting for the promised Savior. He cries out for Jesus in language that demonstrates that he believes Jesus to be the Christ. Son of David is a title that was given only to the coming Christ. Now, where did Bartimaeus come to believe this? Had he heard about Jesus from others? Had he himself at one point sat or stood on the edge of a crowd listening to one of Jesus' sermons? But he cries out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Bartimaeus does not know. In what direction even to shout? Is Jesus coming toward him? Is Jesus right in front of him? Has Jesus passed by? Is Bartimaeus shouting into a tree two feet from his face? 
It is a pitiful thing to be in the position of this poor man who cannot see, who must live his life on the road as a beggar, from whom many perhaps turn away their eyes and make a detour around him so as not to have to look at him. But he cries out, Jesus, have mercy. The crowd tries to shush him. Shh, shh. Why? Because they're embarrassed at all of this loud noise? Or is it because the Jewish leaders are uncomfortable that he is attached to Jesus in his cries, the title of the Messiah, the Christ? But he will not be silenced. Jesus, son of David, he cries the louder, have mercy on me. And so we do the same. We cry out for mercy. On how many Sundays in the liturgy, for hundreds, even thousands of years, we rise and we sing, Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Perhaps on most Sundays, we hardly hear ourselves say the words. They become a mere clatter of repetition. Lord, have mercy. And perhaps we're wondering, how long the service is going to take today. But then, one week something happens. There's a curveball thrown our way that we were not expecting. Or a bad diagnosis. Or a burden we can't talk about. Or guilt that weighs us down. Or an empty chair at life's table. Or a family crisis. And now we rise from the pew and we draw a deep breath and knowing how needy and helpless we truly are and that our need of Christ is always total and absolute our need of his mercy always total and absolute but now something has awakened us to how true that is and we take that deep breath and we say, Lord, have mercy. If Jesus doesn't help us, nobody can and nobody will. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And Christ promises to answer our call. And he has pledged to deliver us. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. They called the blind man, saying to him, Be of good cheer, rise, he is calling you. Throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. So Jesus answered and said to him, What do you want me to do? The blind man said to him, Rabboni, that I may receive my sight. And Jesus said, go your way, your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. Do not miss this. Jesus stood still. 
Joshua made the sun stand still, but a blind man made the sun of righteousness stand still in the road. Jesus stood still, and he talked to this blind man as though he were the only man on earth. What do you want me to do for you? He says. Now maybe Bartimaeus thinks something like, well, what a strange question. Isn't it rather obvious what I would like you to do for me, Jesus? But Jesus wants Bartimaeus to ask. He wants him to be specific. It's about the relationship. It's at the essence of being delivered by Christ. Talk to me. Speak to me. Be specific. Express your trust, your faith in me for my mercy. And so maybe our request is different than his. He cries out, Rabboni, great teacher that I may receive my sight. And maybe we ask for other things. Lord, ease my pain and help me to get back on my feet again. Lord, help me to have the joy to sing songs in the storm and to trust you you will do just the right thing. Lord, help me with the kids. With the kids who are struggling through their teen years with all types of temptations. Lord, help me pay the medical bills, buy the groceries, or be content with what you've already given me. But be specific. You have not because you ask not, says the Lord in the book of James. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened, said Jesus. Jesus wants us to be specific in what we ask for. He has promised to deliver us. Oh, not always. In the time and manner that we might think best or that we might presumptuously prescribe for the Almighty, but always in the very best way, far beyond our ability, He will deliver. He does for blind Bartimaeus. In response to the man's God-given faith, Light pours down upon the dark eyes of the blind beggar there in the road. He can see. The word of the prophet Isaiah is fulfilled. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened. And as St. Paul mentioned in our epistle lesson, so the eyes of his heart are opened also and light that he might see what a good and gracious God he has. And having been delivered, he now honors Christ. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. He does not remain there on the roadside. Bartimaeus with his brand new eyes follows Jesus on the road to Jerusalem. Was he there in Jerusalem then to see with his brand new eyes the screaming mobs at the judgment seat of Pilate, the scourged back of the Savior, the thorn-crowned head, the death march out to Calvary. Did those eyes recreated by Christ, 
did they see the Savior bow his head in death on the cross? Was he among the many who with his eyes saw a risen, glorified Christ who came back from the grave? Did he remember the words of old Simeon, My eyes have seen your salvation. Or did the words of the risen Christ mean more to him than to others? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. For Bartimaeus believed long before he could see. On the road, the blind beggar called out, Lord, have mercy. On what road have you most often and most deeply met Christ? Surely, absolutely, only in the gospel, in the word and the holy sacrament. Anyone who claims to meet Christ apart from the word and the sacrament deceives themselves, is living a fraudulent bunch of fluff. But on what road of your life did you most often encounter the good news of him who loved you and poured out his life for you. Was it not most often on the road of adversity that your attention became focused on a merciful God? Was it not most often when the road was hard and the shadows lengthened on the path up ahead that you came to know Christ more dearly and more closely. Here on the road to Jericho, where the rest of the world all seems to be having a party, and you sit there crying out, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me! Has it not been on that kind of road where you met Jesus most closely? Amen. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, to keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen.
A prayer of thanksgiving is requested for Angela Horseman, the wife of Benjamin Horseman, who this morning gave birth to a baby boy. Let us pray. Blessed art thou, O God, that thou hast graciously sustained this mother in her peril and pain, and gladdened her heart with the gift of a child. We pray thee, keep both mother and child in thy protection. Give them strength and health, and avert whatever might prove hurtful to them in body or soul. And as thou wilt be pleased to receive the child into the kingdom of thy grace by the washing of holy baptism, grant unto him thy continual blessing through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And a prayer of thanksgiving is requested for the 97th birthday of Renata Bushek. We pray. Lord of love, we thank you for the 97 years of grace you have granted to your servant. We praise you for being with her in good days and bad, in joy and sorrow, in sickness and health. We praise you above all for having provided her with the rich comfort of your word and sacraments. Continue to make these treasures her joy and delight. Be her strength even when earthly strength fails. And finally bring her and all of us to the joy and glory of eternal life in your presence. We ask it in the name of our Savior, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We continue with the communion portion of the service, beginning on page 21 in the front of the hymn. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who promised that wherever two or three come together in his name, there he is with them to shepherd his flock till he comes again in glory. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Christ on the night he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me then he took the cup gave thanks and gave it to them saying drink from it all of you this is my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me the peace of the Lord be with you always
love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for the remission of all your sins, take drink. This is the true love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for the remission of all your sins. May this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus strengthen and preserve you in the true faith and in life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen.
life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Let us continue on page 24 with the Song of Simeon.
Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this holy supper. We pray that through it you will strengthen our faith in you and increase our love for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace.